the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. God bless you. I'm glad you're back. Hey, don't forget, the just shall live by faith. And if we're going to live by faith, then we need to understand what faith is. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come to worship and praise your holy name. I ask Father to move us out of the way. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Speak to our hearts, Heavenly Father. Make it plain for us to understand where you're coming from so that we can hear your voice and understand your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, the point is, you know, the vision of ministry is all about teaching the word of God in a practical and effective manner. We ain't talking about trying to get deep because there ain't time for being deep. You know what I mean, if you want to strongly go spiritually, you can get into more in depth and knowledge of the word of God. But you know, most of us, we, <laughs> we're doing good if we can sit there and study the word of God and apply that word of God in our life daily. Understanding, hey, this is what's written as far as the New Testament. I'm gonna walk with that, you know. And we talk about the fact is in our in our central theme of the thing, we use the first scripture as a Hebrews 11, one. Now faith, what is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Have faith in God. And Mark 11, 24 is the, 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 what we desire. Is, is, is the, and that desire, I said before, is the blueprint. Even hope is a blueprint. It's in here. I said it's, it's a mind game. It's a mind warfare. It's a spiritual warfare in the mind. And what we operate in and use the weapons that he's given us, the weapons of warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. We want to have a source. We, we, we talked about last time, your faith could you have faith in many different things. Some people have faith in themselves. Some people have faith in ministries. Some people have faith in money. Some people have faith in a person. And, and then the problem is that God, when we talk about as believers, is have faith in God. And those people who don't believe in God, they one of the bigger things is, is they've been turned off because of what they see in other people's life. They call themselves Christians, sit there and they have this audacity to sit there and judge somebody else and not recognize they got their own faults too. And the Bible talks about that, but some people can't see that. There's people, I, one of my friends in, in, in ministry that said, we got to preach the standard. Well, the thing is, you know what? You can't preach the standard unless you live the standard. And see, it's so easy if you pinpoint an area and sit there and say, no, I'm, I'm preaching against this because this is, I know this is going against the standard. I know I'm not doing that, but you're doing something else. And the Bible said you sin at one point, you sin it all. So it's very hard for us to sit there and preach a standard that we're not even doing ourselves. And we think we're fooling somebody? Come on, man. I'm just saying it's better to be more humble and be meek. And sit there and say, look, I ain't arrived. All sin that comes short of the glory of God. So, so I'm not going to sit there and try to preach a standard that I can't even keep myself. And that's why it's so important for us when we talk about the just to live by faith is to teach one another to live by faith, walk by faith, not by sight. What's going on in your mind? I'm telling you, what's going on in your mind is critical as a believer walking by faith. Um, so we have to remember that faith Faith, Hebrews 11, 1, is the substance of things hoped for. What is hope? It's an imagination. It is a, it's a visualization, an expectation of something good happening. We don't hope negative. We hope something positive, right? So the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. Not faith in other people, but we get we let we fall and our expectations fall because we're focusing on the wrong thing. 
That's why we got to make sure our faith is in God's word, spoken and written. And we want to hear from God because God is always talking. And he, it is not, oh, I brought up something before and said, look, let me make sure you get this. You don't have, hearing God's voice is not a gift. What I'm trying to say, everybody can hear from God. Even in the Bible, there's people that were saved, not saved, heard from God. They heard him. We can talk about the children of Israel, they won't save. They were delivered from bondage, but they won't save. They weren't born again. And they heard the voice of, voice of God speaking on Mount Sinai to them. And they said, most people will talk to him because when we talk to God, we're gonna die. <laughs> we, 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 we had a, even a, we talk about, even the scripture of the donkey actually spoke. God used a donkey to speak to a man. They was going to try to prophesy against God's people. Um, <laughs> we, there's, there's many uh, incidents in the Bible, in the New Testament as well, where a person was not saved but heard from God. Matter of fact, hey, this is a good one. Paul, we call Saul, his first name was Saul at first, and then he changed his name to Paul. Paul was on the road to Damascus. Paul was not saved. Paul was wasting the church. He was crucifying the people that were believers in Christ Jesus. He won't say, on the road to Damascus, God spoke to him. And that boy got saved because he heard from God. And, and so many of us, we come to, come to making that confession because we heard from God. We heard that unction that, that, that tells us it's time to turn our life over to Christ. It's time to recognize we need salvation. That's why people who are not saved, they don't come to Christ because they rejected what they heard from God. Because I, I, I can tell you right now, every last one of us have heard from the inner ear, not this physical ear, because that's not how God talks. He's a spirit, right? God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So when God talks to you, believers, and non-believers, he talks to you through your spirit. And whether we listen to the voice of God, take heed to what he says, is what matters. And you know, in Revelation chapter two and chapter three, the Bible says he has an ear, let him hear what the spirit said to the churches. And then those letters dealing with two and three of the different churches, all those churches have issues. So for people who don't believe, just understand, the Bible is very clear that we, we can be the church, but it doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. We're not, you're not perfect, and I, don't, I hope you're not sitting there espousing that you think the people in the church will be perfect. But I do understand when you sit there and say, I got an issue with people in the church because they sit there and try to, hear that word I take earlier, preach a standard that they're not even living themselves. Children of Israel, when they're going by the law, they preach in the law but they're not fulfilling the law themselves. Only Christ could have done that. And, and that's why we're, 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 we're people to come into the body of Christ. We come as we are and we grow through the body, through the spirit, through the study and the fellowship with one another, trusting in God to change us individually and not try to impose our will on somebody else. So just watch out for that. So we want to have faith in God, and, and faith is always, and from a biblical perspective, is aiming toward getting God to move on our behalf. And we need to understand, we got to trust in Him. And we got to understand that uh, you petition until you receive it. Meaning, what do I mean, petition? If you pray every day for something you ask and believe in God for it, then you do that until you receive it in your spirit. And you hear that voice of God saying, Got it. You got it. Because sometimes there's going to be situations where we're praying for God to move and it's not his will. One of the, one of the believers said, this, no, I, 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 think if, if, I think it's a lack of faith if you pray more than once about a situation. Well, that's not what the Bible said. Paul, when he had infirmities, right, he prayed to God many times to remove that, infirm that infirmity, that thorn in the flesh. 
Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, this cup can pass, let it pass, but nevertheless, let your will be done. But he's petitioned to God to say, if this can pass, <laughs> I don't want to go through this if I don't have to, but I'll do it because of your will. So and he did that three times in the Garden. So it's not unusual for you to continue to pray and, and, and ask God and have faith in God for him to move. And understand, sometimes if it's outside his will, that what Christ demonstrated, nevertheless, let thy will be done. Because that's what's important for us as we live by the faith of God and trust in him. Amen? Because we can have faith in something else. We know that. We talked about it earlier. We have faith in money. We can have faith in people. We can have faith in things. Right? There's people in the old rabbit foots and stuff like that. People have faith and trying to, to bring something to pass and things that does not have any light. And it becomes like dead work. You know, faith without works is dead. Faith without work, faith without work is dead when we don't have faith in God. It has to be faith in God and doing His will, not our will. Because when we do our will, that's when we lack or we call it dead works. We got to make sure that we don't focus on dead works. We got to focus on the will of God and, 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 and walk by the will of God. We talk about in Mark 11, uh, 22 and 24. And, and you know, I was showing that, but the fact is that that desire, uh, that blueprint, that hope has to be toward the things and the will of God. Because if we don't do that, then we're gonna miss the boat. And then once again, it becomes dead works, right? And Jesus is very clear when told I have faith in God. You know, I didn't make this up. I, it's, it's right in the scriptures. You need to go by Mark 11, 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in what? In God. And then we're talking about the fact is, well, how do we have faith in God? We're talking about his word, the written and the spoken word. Have faith that you're hearing from God. Make sure you get to that point of personal relationship that you hear from God, because that's what it's all about. He said, for verily I say unto you in verse 23, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, those are problems in life, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, right? In his spirit. And to believe that those things which he says, they're spoken now, what's come out of your mouth, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. What's come out of your mouth? That's why the just live by faith, because live by faith means is, what's coming out of my mouth shall line up what's going on in my mind. If I don't like what's going on in my mind, I need to not release it from my mouth. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we have to watch what's coming out of our mouth. Because I like that part. He said is, whatsoever he says, right? Therefore, 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. That's what we're talking about, the anatomy of faith. When we pray, pray into who? See, that's what we, that's critical. Who are we communicating with? In this case, we're talking about communicating to God, not man. And it said, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. That's why we want to focus on the things of God and the will of God. And we want to make sure our faith is in God, not in man. Because we have faith in other things. That's where we're going to fall. And another thing too, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to add these other scriptures to here too, 24 and 26. He said, and when you stand praying, stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that you, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Let's read it again. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, Neither would your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. That's why it's critical for us to, to, to don't have, see, 
we 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 good at trying to say I don't go into to the club, I don't dance, you know, uh, crazy anything like that. We we use those outward things, but the inward things was going on. What's going on our heart? And we got unforgiveness, and unforgiveness brings in destruction too. It's a poison, right? So we, he's he's telling us you have to not walk in hate, not in darkness, right? So so just make sure we have faith in God. And we don't want to substitute what God says uh, to other men in the Bible, what he told them. We want the things in the Bible, uh, written records, as I said before, of God interacting with man. And the scriptures, when it says different things, such as by stripes, you, we are healed. The question is, you still have to personally believe that. That's what we talk about, have faith in God about healing, have faith in God about deliverance in different areas, but it has to be faith in God. And I think that's what people pull back from the church. And when they recognize people are led, taught to, to have faith in things, ministry, people, uh, and their own ability. When God has said, no, when we talk about faith, it is talking about that spiritual faith toward the will of God. Right, we want to make sure we get to that point, and we also understand to look. There's different degrees of our own faith. When Jesus came from the Mount of Transfiguration, and this this man had a son that was just, just a lunatic, and the, the disciples couldn't cast him out. Right, the the man Jesus said, uh, "Look, if you have faith." This, just have faith. All things are possible with God. And the, the man said, Lord, help my unbelief. I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. The, the, see, there's a different, there's different things, different levels of our faith. There's, there's some doubt in there and there's some levels of trust in there. And we want to get to that point of trusting in God. And there where we won't have, we want to remove unbelief. And come strong in faith. Matter of fact, we even put that in the fact is that there's people that could be weak in faith, faith, right? There's people that could be strong in faith. Abraham, it was witnessed in the scriptures that Abraham was strong in faith. Strong in faith in God. You know, he told them to get her to move and go to another country out of your family house. Abraham moved because he heard from God and he obeyed God's will. And therefore, he it's a testimony that Abraham was strong in faith. But we also talk about the fact is the Bible said, don't despise somebody who's weak in faith. That means you can have a weak faith. He said, don't despise that. You want to build that person up because that person is, 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 is moving from glory to glory, from faith to faith. And that's how we're supposed to live. We, that's how we're supposed to grow. We don't we come in about it, Christ drinking milk, meaning we only get it, they call it the milk of the word. But at certain points, we get stronger. We're talking about meat of the word. We want to have that, we become stronger in faith. But everybody has a measure of faith. But then we got to work our faith muscle to become more solid than ever before. So that's the point about you can be strong in faith, you can be weak in faith. Uh, Abraham, testimony. Strong in faith, us as believers, you, me, it's, 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 it's a growing process. That's why I said to just to live by faith, meaning moment by moment, we live by faith in what? In God, His Word, His written Word, and His spoken Word. The spoken Word, I said, you don't have to have a gift to hear from God. All people can hear from God. The question is, are you relieving in what you're hearing from God and you're trusting in Him? And those, those people that uh, don't have faith in God have faith in other things. That's one of the things you got to watch out for, right? You want to have that, you got to watch out for that. Uh, but we do want to make the fact is that you boast to live by faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this part of making it plain. I think it's simple. I think we captured the right scriptures and words for this. And we're going to continue to focus on the anatomy of faith. The just shall live 
by faith and we're supposed to live by faith, then we need to study what faith is and try to get that incorporated in our life and grow. And we now know you can be weak in faith. You can have levels on belief, right? That's what the scripture says. Or you can be strong in faith like Abraham. Let us focus on growing to be strong in faith. Faith in what? In God because you have faith in other things. Let's have faith in God, amen? All right. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the Bible study. I really enjoyed the time sitting there making a claim with you, sharing the scripture with you. And I guarantee you, everything that I'm saying to you, I'm listening to myself so I can continue to try to apply those things in my life as well, amen? All right. So I'll catch you next time. And don't forget the just to live by faith, amen? What's going on in your mind? What's the blueprint in your mind? That blueprint got to line up with the will of God but let it also be something that you have an expectation of good to happen on your behalf through God. Amen? All right. I'll check you later. And like I said, we can keep going and we'll keep going. But we got to put make track, keep these videos within a good, reasonable range. Amen? All right. I'll check you later. And don't forget, walk by faith, not by sight. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>